wake up, I was shotgun in his truck, holding his old seven mag, my first buck tag. Off to the east, it was burning red. He took a sip from his mug, and he said, There's something about a sunrise warming up a blue sky. Shining through the trees, bouncing off the leaves, it'll clear up your mind. There's no other peace like up here at daylight. I don't know what it is, the longer I live, the more that I find. There's something about a sunrise. Well, we finally got all the gear organized and loaded in our packs, and uh, we're going to head out towards where we're going to camp tonight, opening mornings tomorrow. We've got to pick up some water along the way. It's a nice spring though, so we're going to have a already heavy pack. We're going to be more heavily burdened here in a few hundred yards. Not looking forward to that part. Returning to familiar haunts, I had invited John Belusiak and longtime friend Leonard Ward to join me on this hunt. Not knowing who was going to go after it, but then one of the bigger bucks, a three by three, popped its head up, and uh, and so they would chosen me to go ahead and go for it, and I got down there, got in place, and made a range, and it was like 72 yards, but about a 58 yard shot, pretty vertical, and so anyways, I went to pull the bow back, and one of my fiber optics was up, and uh, also I noticed the um, quiver was just rattling and it kind of threw me off I guess I went down earlier into the rocks it's pretty rugged here I must have knocked something loose or whatever so I don't not not taking nothing from a blown shot but I was focusing on other stuff I guess no excuse on just a a, a missed opportunity on the first day anyway and pretty heartbroken over the deal last night was rough sleeping due to the wind and stuff like that but I think tonight will be a little bit rougher if we don't redeem ourselves. <laughs> I've seen Leonard shoot softball sized groups at this distance so for him this was no Hail Mary. Technology has certainly made us more effective hunters no matter what type of weapon you carry but sometimes when we become increasingly dependent on technology the very tool that helps make us more effective can instead cost us a hard-earned opportunity. Sometimes, simpler is better. Caroline, my baby, Caroline, my sweet. If I married Caroline, so happy I would be. I wouldn't need no whiskey. I wouldn't need no wine. I wouldn't need much of anything if Caroline was mine. I think most of us choose to hunt for similar reasons. For food, to indulge in the outdoors, to escape from daily life, and among others, for the challenge. I, like most of my peers, deliberately increase the challenge by choosing to hunt with a bow. To continually raise the level of challenge, some hunters choose to hold out for mature, record-sized animals. Some test themselves by hunting different species or continually seeking new hunting areas to learn. For me, I have a species I love to hunt, mule deer, that caters to my favorite style of hunting, spot and stock. I am also fortunate to have several hunting areas that I love to spend time in and are as familiar and as enjoyable as an old friend. 
In 2007, I was searching for that new challenge and began my transition back to traditional archery, bow hunting in its simplest form. Regardless of your choice of weapon, whether it has a single string, wheels, or launches lead, the most important thing to remember is we are all hunters. We are all brothers. After a couple of days in more blown stalks, with the assistance of some other hunting pressure, we'd pretty well stirred up our basin, so we relocated camp to find some fresh country. It didn't take long in our new spot for Leonard and John to find some new bucks to stalk. This time, it was John's turn for a stalk. The bucks John decided to stalk moved up out of the bottom of the canyon and bedded up against a short rock cliff a perfect spot for a short range shot. At seven yards, he was still unable to see the bucks because of the curvature of the rock. John picked up a small rock to lob out beyond the deer. Unfortunately, John's shot sailed high. The previous day, I watched a bedded buck the whole day, hoping he would move to a spot that would offer an opportunity for a stock, but it never happened. The next day, I returned, hoping I could find him again and would have better luck. Here's a close-up of the buck we're after here. With swirling winds, blown stalks, and missed shots, the days quickly melted away, and we were abruptly facing the end of our hunt, with no tags filled. We all felt the pressure ratcheting up.
<laughs> man, what a scene there. This is the same buck that I was on yesterday for nine and a half hours sitting waiting for him to bed in the right position. We went back in the same canyon this morning looking for him and spotted him, same, almost same spot, within 100 yards. And uh, we were on him for, I don't know, five, five minutes maybe, and all of a sudden he got really squirrely, boogered out, and went into the next basin, and I thought for sure it was gone at that point, because where I thought he went was more into the timber. And then, so we decided to go look for other, uh, other animals and went over two more basins, actually got on the ridge, and then uh, Zach spotted the three bucks in this bottom of this basin here. And then, uh, so we decided to come back after him. We lost track of him. And well, to make a long story short, we ended up finding them again. And uh, I was able to make a stock in my uh, in my boxers there, or finish it in my boxers, as you saw. That was a that was a first for me. I, I had to push through some solid brush, and I just knew it was going to be way too noisy, snagging on my pants and stuff. So I stripped down and got right on top, about a 15-yard shot. And I, I can't honestly say that I remember feeling more satisfied more gratified about a deer that i've gotten than this one we've worked our tail off for this individual buck right here and to see to have it all come together uh, i'm so so happy it's a second to the last day of the hunt and uh, i'm going home with some backstrap oh man holy cow goodness what a beaut what a beautiful buck holy smokes look at the split eye guards on this side boy do I feel blessed man oh man split his velvet in the back here but it's it held up really well considering I think everyone dreams of tagging out on opening day, but there is hardly anything more fulfilling than going the distance on a hunt, experiencing the full gamut of emotions, the eager anticipation of opening day, the adrenaline rush of the first stalk of the season, the bitter disappointment of a blown stalk or a missed shot, the low during the long hike back to camp out of a deep canyon, the dread of the hunt coming to an end, and the anxiety of an unfilled tag in another long off-season. No, you can take that short hunt. I'll take that roller coaster every time, even if it means eating a tag on occasion. I love solo hunting, the freedom, the self-reliance, and I embrace the loneliness and the heightened sense of awareness that comes with it. But it is pretty hard to beat returning to camp and celebrating a successful hunt, whether it is your own tag that is notched or one of your buddies. Sharing that experience forges bonds not soon broken.